Hello everyone, okay then, welcome to the latest video and in this one we're going to be looking at conservatism and the state. Now, as with all the core ideologies, uh, their view of the state and what the state should do and how big that state should be uh, depends very much on their view of human nature. So, for example, for liberals and for socialists who tend to have quite a positive view of human nature, they see the state therefore as being something uh, relatively positive as well. So for socialists it enables people to achieve equality, for liberals it enables people um, to have their individualism and uh, all those sorts of things. For conservatives, predominantly anyway, uh, they have a negative view of human nature. And again, go back to the earlier video I made on conservatives and human nature. And because they've got a negative view of human nature, they therefore have a fairly negative view of the state and what the state should do. So let's look at an area of agreement then amongst our conservatives. And this goes, this area of agreement includes traditional conservatives, uh, One Nation conservatives, neo conservatives, and also the neoliberals, uh, people like Rand and Nozick. All liberals agree uh, that the state is needed to provide authority and law and order, and also for, for providing a defence, you know, like national defence. So Hobbes, Rand, Oakeshott, Nozick, and any other ones I've forgotten, okay, they all believe that the state is needed to provide law and order. Uh, Hobbes and um, Rand agree with each other on this particular area. They agree, for example, that humans are rational, or rational enough in Hobbes' view, that people recognise that they need a state to provide that authority. And again, this is something which Rand also argues as well. Um, Oakeshott and Burke also agree that the state is there for authority and the state is there to provide law and order. And as I keep saying, Rand and Nozick also recognise the state's there for law and order and authority as well, to protect people's private property in particular. So all Conservatives therefore agree that the state is there for law and order. Uh, the reasons why they agree um, is a little bit different for Rand and Nozick. Uh, to some extent, because they've got a more positive view of human nature. But I suppose we all agree on why they agree on it, if you like, and that's because that people are prone, if they're not careful, to taking away other people's freedoms and liberties. And so all Conservatives do agree that the state's there for uh, providing authority. What they kind of disagree on uh, regarding this, I suppose, is the extent of that state and also the type of state which you might get. And what I mean by this is that Hobbes, um, he doesn't really care what type of government it is. He does have some idea that there should be some kind of contract with government, but he's very keen that you shouldn't kind of remove government and the citizens should not remove governments. Uh, the fact that we're so nasty and horrible and the state of nature is such a you know, nasty, brutish place, we kind of deserve what we get to some extent. So Hobbes, for example, is far more relaxed about the idea of absolute monarchy. Hobbes will be against, for example, the people of North Korea removing uh, the regime there, um, etc., etc. And this is something which other conservatives tend not to agree with just to the same extent. So, for example, for Burke and Oakeshott, uh, they believe there should be some limits on that state. Yes, it's there for law and order and stuff. Yes, they don't promote the idea of removing governments by force, you know. Burke was very much against the French Revolution, for example. Uh, but they do believe in some kind of limits on that government. Um, Burke believed in like a limited monarchy. Um, Oakeshott believed in democracy as a way through. And then when you go to Rand and Nozick as well, um, they, they dislike this idea of big states. You know, it's there for law and order, and that's the only involvement you should have in people's lives. And again, uh, they're quite happy for governments to be that small, which again is different to Hobbes. You know, they'd be horrified around the Nozick, the idea of some kind of North Korea kind of dictator. Yes, he provides law and order, but he also takes away individualism and freedom, etc., etc. So they agree on law and order. They disagree, I suppose, on the size of the state doing that law and order, and they kind of disagree on the type of government you might get and how far you should put up with that type of government to provide that law and order. Okay, another area of, area of agreement, and this is basically an area of, of agreement between traditional and one nation conservatives only, uh, is that traditional and one nation conservatives believe that you need the state to be in place before a society can grow organically. 
you need that peace and stability and all the rest of it which the state can provide which then enabled if you like a society to kind of germinate if you want to think of it in that in that way and they believe that the state has an important role to play in protecting the social order protecting that organic uh, society i suppose and also defending tradition which is all part of the organic society so traditional one nation concerns has put quite a lot of emphasis on the state being involved in not just providing law and order but also protecting traditions and protecting that organic society and as a consequence of this both of them are fairly pragmatic in their way of defending the organic society and tradition and one nations as we know who grew up out of this fear in the 1860s of a potential revolution caused by economic inequalities they grew to this idea of, of involving themselves in some economic intervention you know to try and provide a little bit more kind of hope i suppose for those at the bottom end of society and this of course then led to one nation conservatives in the 1950s supporting john maynard keynes's ideas um some of labor's welfare state etc etc so one nation conservatives um I suppose they see the state playing an important role in the economy to in order to prevent kind of huge kind of inequalities in society. Traditional conservatives, along with one nation, building this idea of the state preserving tradition, acting pragmatically, whether that's in getting itself involved in the economy, whether that's in promoting various traditions and upholding various kind of um, national events, I suppose, to, all, to kind of underpin those traditions. Neoconservatives, um, they're also, um, I suppose they're quite keen on traditional ideas, or they're particularly keen on traditional social values. So they think the state should be involved in preserving traditional social values, you know, things like preserving marriage as a uh, principle, for example, and preserving um, those sorts of traditions. They're less keen, though, on the state being involved in the economy, unless it promotes marriage and stuff. So they're quite happy for tax breaks, for example, um, for churches to have you know you can see it in the united states for example where some churches they can get like tax exemptions and things like that they're quite keen for things like um i think you can get lowers or you could do anyway in britain until fairly recently uh i think your tax rate was different if you were married to try and encourage people to get married they're keen for the state to be involved in at, it, at that level i suppose it's a little phrase i've just made up i suppose you could say neoconservatives are happy for the state to be involved in the bedroom just not the boardroom Okay, um, for the, I'm quite happy with that little thought I came up with, uh, for the neo-liberals, uh, the neo, uh, yeah, the neo-liberals uh, from the new right, Rand and Nozick, they don't like any of this at all. Okay, they are not keen on tradition and hierarchy particularly. Uh, tradition often gets in the way of individualism, you know, it prevents people from entrepreneurship, it prevents people from doing what they like. It tends to involve lots of rules and regulations, you know, we can't do this because 300 years ago we did that, etc, etc, etc. They're far less keen on, um, well, in fact, they don't like the state being involved in the economy in any way. They completely reject One Nation Conservative's idea that the state needs to be involved in the economy to, you know, prevent some kind of uprising or anything of that nature. They say roll back the state, you know, get the state out of the way, should not be involved in the economy at all. And Ayn Rand famously said that the state um, should just be involved in security, otherwise it's a flabby state, and a flabby state is a feeble state. So Rand and Nozick think the state should be get out of people's lives, should not be involved telling them whether they can get married or not, should not be involved in, you know, uh, regulating the economy particularly. Um, it should just be there for security. So a much smaller state, less interested in tradition, less interested in hierarchy, just make sure you protect us all from being attacked by our neighbours and just make sure, you know, you provide that law and order. That's all you need to do. Okay, this is something traditional one nation conservatives don't agree with. They think the state has to play a more active role in order to ensure the organic society is being protected and enhanced and ensuring tradition is being upheld and kind of being used to kind of glue people together, I suppose, um, due to our psychological flaws. Okay, the third area, which is kind of connected, I will fully admit, uh, but the third area I came up with, this idea of um, a ruling elite, I suppose how the country is run, I suppose. I've already said before how Burke um, is 
he just believe in a social contract with the state. So there are some limits on this, but he is he is quite chilled about kind of absolute kind of rulers, um, as long as they don't take away people's property. Quite interestingly, um, so he, he doesn't believe that people should get involved in like removing Kim Jong Un. He'd look at modern day Iraq and say, it's, you know, this is why I should not get involved in other nations. You know, you don't know what you don't know what their traditions and societies like. Keep the hell out of it. Okay, he doesn't like the idea that people should be able to remove governments, you know, or anything of that nature. Um, what Burke, though, uh, supports, and traditional conservatives tend to support, is this idea of a ruling class, a ruling elite. There's a group of people, and Burke was writing in the 1780s, so it may mainly be aristocrats, I suppose, you know, families who've run the country for generations. You know, think of Pitt the Elder and Pitt the Younger, for example, and father and son, who, I know, Pitt the Younger was Prime Minister in the late 1700s, early 1800s, Pitt the Elder, I think it was Foreign Secretary, I can't remember now, but he was involved in the uh, the Seven Years' War, etc., etc. He's quite happy for that kind of thing, you know, a small elite, probably been to the same schools, been educated in the same way, they know how to run the country, you know, they know what British traditions are, they know the history of the country and what the governments can do, and, you know, these are the people that should run the states. Um, Oakeshott, again, he's writing a bit later. He's writing, what, the 1950s, isn't it? So it's less kind of an aristocratic elite in his view. But again, he's more than comfortable with, like, um, politicians kind of coming from a similar kind of social class, similar kind of background, because these people know how to run the country and they're pragmatic. And again, you see that today, don't you? Look at when we did that work on Parliament, you know, how many of our MPs uh, went to Oxford and Cambridge? It's a huge percent, isn't it, compared to the national average? There's a huge number of our current politicians who have been lawyers in the past or some kind of legal expertise. Um, most of them are white, middle-aged men or older. Okay, And these are things which traditional conservatives, and I suppose to a lot of one nation conservatives, are more than comfortable with. You know, uh, these people know how to run the country. You know, they've been educated to a high standard, etc., etc., etc. For Rand, um, she's less keen on this. It has to be said. Uh, remember, she's a bit of an outsider. You know, she her family fled Russia in nineteen. I think it was nineteen oh five. I think it was the 1917 revolution. She fled Russia to the United States. She's always a bit of an outsider. Um, she's less keen on this idea of pragmatism. She's less keen on this idea that certain groups kind of run things and you know just because they've done it in the past doesn't mean they're any good anymore does it um she's much more keen this idea that you know humans are rational and the best people should really uh, be kind of doing things you know in terms of the economy you know the weak succeed and the you know the weak fail and the and strong succeed so those who are good at kind of producing money they do well etc etc it's a similar view with uh within the country as well you know uh, it shouldn't be left to families and stuff. It doesn't like things like hereditary monarchy. It should be left to those who are good at running the country, should run the country down to their own skills and abilities. So, in short, um, all Conservatives agree on security being really important and law and order. And that's a real, that's a real fundamental thing that they agree on uh, regarding the state. Traditional and One Nation Conservatives do agree on the idea of tradition being important and the state upholding traditions and the state kind of uh, protecting, I suppose, the organic society and ensuring it kind of carries on um, into the future. I suppose you could say traditional and One Nations also agree on this idea of kind of a ruling elite uh, who are best placed to run the country. Um, in terms of areas of disagreement, against usually with the neoliberals, so for example, um, the size of the state, so in which they really disagree on, isn't it? So Rand and Nozick want a really teeny weeny state, uh, which just does law and order and not much else, whereas one nation conservatives see quite a big state, and traditional to kind of in the middle, but much closer to the one nation kind of end, I suppose. Um, they really disagree on the importance of tradition and stuff, okay? Rand is less, not that keen on tradition and stuff. It gets in the way of people. As I've already said, traditional one nations believe that tradition is really important. And again, their view of society differs as well. So for Rand, uh, well, there's no society. We're not, there's not really a society in Rand's worldview. We're all kind of atoms. So again, the state plays a very minimum role in that kind of society, which again is something which is disagreed upon by traditional and one nations who see an organic society which needs protecting and nurturing 
um, by the state. Okay, I hope that helps you on conservatives and the state. And the next video, which I might probably make tomorrow now, uh, we'll have a look at conservatives and society. Okay, so I will see you for the next video.